Um, many patients uh, want to know what the meaning of some of their uh, blood tests are. Specifically, uh, patients come to us uh, already having had tests like uh, FSH and uh, AMH. And I want to spend a minute explaining these tests to you. FSH stands for follicle stimulating hormone. Follicle stimulating hormone is a hormone that comes from your pituitary gland and um, turns on your ovaries. You can kind of think of it like a signal coming from your brain to make your ovaries go. As women get older and the ovaries become less responsive, your pituitary sends out a stronger signal. The same as if you were driving a car on a slippery hill, you might step on the accelerator a little harder to make the car continue to go up the hill. So as you get older and your ovaries stop working as well, FSH begins to rise. And you can kind of relate that rise in FSH to how strong your ovary is and, and how, how well it's going to be able to make eggs. Um, the pituitary, which makes the FSH, follicle-stimulating hormone, and your ovaries talk to each other. The ovary sends up hormones that shuts backs off on the FSH a little bit, the FSH sends down um, to the ovary and, and turns the ovary on, and there's that relationship, kind of like a thermostat in the furnace. Um, so uh, as you get older and the ovary's not working as well, FSH rises. In a sense, looking at FSH is telling you something about how the ovary is doing today, at the moment that you took that test. Uh, AMH is a little bit different. AMH stands for a long name, anti-Mullerian hormone, that makes no sense in this context, so don't try to figure out what it means. Um, it has to do with uh, embryonic development, uh, and it's important in, in, in early embryonic development. But for now, we'll just call it AMH. Uh, AMH is produced by every little follicle in your uh, ovaries. So uh, the more follicles you have in your ovaries, the higher the AMH will be. Now some people uh, have, have said that AMH is looking at all the follicles in your ovaries, but that's not really true. It's only looking at those follicles are going to be coming into your next cycle. So rather than saying AMH reflects your ovarian reserve, it actually reflects your functional ovarian reserve, meaning there are other follicles there that um, uh, are not affecting the AMH, um, but, but, but are still there and you, you may be able to use them in the future. So AMH is telling us something in an integrated kind of way um, about uh, how many follicles you have that could be available to you over the next two or three months. Sort of, if you want to take an analogy uh, to the stock market, um, uh, FSH is kind of saying, where did the Dow close today? Uh, AMH is kind of saying, you know, where, where's the Fed putting the interest rate? It's more of a long-term integrated assessment of what's going on with your, um, with your uh, ovaries and your ovarian reserve. Across the country, uh, for many years, people just had one cutoff uh, for um, what they considered a normal FSH and a normal AMH. In general, um, the cutoff for FSH was around 10, so levels above 10 were considered to be unfavorable. Um, and uh, levels uh, for AMH below 1 were considered to be unfavorable. Um, and in general, People, if you took a whole crowd of, of women, um, uh, in general, when women get to be around age 40, that's when you cross those thresholds. So um, FSH rising, AMH falling, and that cross is around uh, age 40. But uh, those, that kind of assessment um, didn't take into account that uh, these things change continuously as people are um, aging. So there's actually a normal level for somebody who's 25, a normal level for somebody who's 20, for 35, for each of these things. And here at CHR, 
um, we pay attention to what an age-specific expected um, uh, AMH and FSH might be. So if you're coming in and you're 30 um, and you have, for instance, an FSH of 8 or 9, um, that's a little bit high for somebody who's, who's 30 and should have an FSH that's much lower. If you're coming in at 30 and your, F and your AMH is um, 1.2 or, 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 or even 2, that's a little bit on the low side for somebody who's that young. If we see those kinds of changes, we'll change your planned um, medications we're using for ovulation induction. We'll treat you with supplements before you start your cycle, all to try to maximize um, uh, your response and give you your best chance of pregnancy.